Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the bench review of the uh, JLB J3 Speed uh, uh, Racing uh, Truggy. Uh, the review will be split in uh, two parts. First part uh, it will be a full inspection of it. Uh, we'll see some of uh, its details, uh, its components to see if this works out of the box or not. And in the second part uh, I'm going to take it outside of course for a test run. Uh, and that will be more interesting than this part but uh, there are some uh, people that uh, enjoy seeing uh, what uh, is inside uh, this uh, RC car and I'm going to show you uh, just uh, that uh, first before opening the box uh, I want to tell you uh, the main uh, details of, the, uh, of uh, this car so it uses uh, 120 amps ESC uh, this is questionable if it really has uh, 120 amps. Uh, this is the same uh, uh, ESC that is found on the uh, Vicar Bison uh, uh, racing truggy, which has similar size and uh, specifications. Uh, it uses a new uh, servo. Uh, you may know that on the previous model of uh, JLB, the servo was um, not a very good, a weak spot actually. Uh, and uh, it will fail very easy. This one has uh, 21 kilograms and it's a metal gear servo so uh, it should last a bit some more. The motor is uh, 3670 uh, rating just like the one on the GLB but this one has uh, 3200 kV so definitely uh, faster. It also comes with a battery, a LiPo battery, it's a 3 cell battery, 4000 milliamps uh, 30C rating which is decent for a uh, battery but you can upgrade it. Of course it's ready to run so it comes with a transmitter and receiver already installed. Uh, the gearing is uh, made from metal including the spur gear which is steel and it also has some uh, nice things like uh, oil filled uh, limited slip differentials. These actually come uh, filled with uh, uh, light silicone oil so they have only limited slip action uh, they are more better for control than traction and it has of course ball bearings and oil filled shocks with progressive springs which is a novelty on uh, this uh, such kind of cars and I'm going to show you why and as you can see it comes uh, really nice uh, packed and uh, this uh, uh, is very well uh, protected uh, during transit. Uh, all the wheels are also uh, inserted into uh, plastic bags. Uh, the transmitter is fixed inside so uh, I've seen on uh, some RC cars that the transmitter is kind of loose and it will wobble inside and hit all things. So they took care of uh, that so uh, it's okay for now and this is uh, what you get in the box of course the car uh, you get a lipo charger uh, uh, this is decent it's the same one that uh, it's supplied on the bison car i have uh, tested the one on the bison and uh, it charges pretty good it's very slow it's not like a hobby charger where you get a lot of information but uh, uh, it will uh, charge properly because it will not overcharge or uh, unbalance the batteries like some of these kind of chargers do. You also get a manual but there is no key for the wheels so there's no spanner for uh, uh, removing the wheels and of course you get a transmitter. It's a redesigned model uh, and let's take a quick look at it. So it has some trim buttons here we get a channel 2 and channel 1 uh, trimming buttons and we get a low high uh, switches here actually these are for um, trimming uh, the positive and the negative of uh, channel 2 which is throttle so you can actually uh, fine tune uh, let's call it like a dual rate setting you can uh, tune the uh, progression or uh, sensitivity of the throttle uh, and brake so there are separate it now it's not a trim that uh, balances throttle or uh, brake you actually adjust the rate of the throttle and the rate of the brake which is very nice and of course dual rate 
is for steering and adjust is the sensitivity of the steering and the uh, travel of the wheels. Uh, this button here I'm going to show you later what uh, it does. This is the third channel of the transmitter and it works. Of course it also has reversing for throttle and steering if it's the case and you need to do that. Moving on to the car I'm going to remove the clips. And the body is off, and there it is, the internals of the J3 Speed. Uh, it's nice that it has the proper metal chassis brace, and also a metal plate on uh, its belly. The, sorry for that, the supports for the wishbones in front for the arms are definitely thicker than the one on the uh, bison uh, I'm going to show you later a comparison with the bison uh, so the chassis is stronger the car is also heavier than the bison because it has a lot of metal parts and here is the battery LiPo 4000 milliamps 30C discharge good for starting with but I'm going to replace it with something bigger with not only higher capacity but also higher discharge rate the tires are extremely extremely soft they seem like uh, are made of jelly uh, it should be interesting. I bet this will balloon like mad uh, during runs. Also, um, a different thing from the older uh, JLB. This one has blue arms and they seem to be a bit more thicker. I hope they are uh, better and more resistant. Uh, this uh, car also does not have a, a central differential like the Bison does. This one has a, a limited slip clutch and it only has a differential in front and one in the rear. So uh, it doesn't have the same uh, control attitude of the Bison. And now uh, let me show you the progressive uh, springs. So as you can see on a uh, all the shock absorbers uh, there uh, isn't a single spring uh, there are actually two springs which are separated by this uh, plastic washer here and uh, uh, each, each spring has its own uh, uh, thickness and uh, power to compress or to extend the suspension so one of the springs uh, works first uh, it's the lower part here which is softer and then it compresses the uh, upper one so that uh, will limit the travel so it will take uh, large bumps very softly but if something goes wrong or not big jump it, it will still do its job and it will not bottom out and uh, hits the limit of the travel which is very nice also the uh, springs are adjustable they have this nut here and there's plenty of travel on the uh, body of the shock absorber here so you can make it uh, harder or uh, softer uh, you can also change the hooking point of the uh, suspension uh, you have another hole here so you can move it a bit more down and of course here uh, on uh, the metal plate here on the shock tower there are several places where you can relocate them and uh, finally uh, tune the suspension if you want to also on the steering you have this uh, steering uh, servo saver here which is adjustable it has a spring loaded mechanism and in case you hit a curve or something it will 
uh, hopefully jump over that and uh, save the arms and the servo gearing and it should be a bit more protection uh, sadly is a front bumper which looks rather nice is made from plastic and if you are going to hit it it won't save a lot of your car and it won't make it jump over bumps it will probably just crack away of course you get leds in the front bumper and on the rear and now i'm going to turn it on it has a combination switch here from which you can turn on the ESC or also program it the ESC and the switch are waterproof while the receiver has no indication if it's waterproof or not also the same goes for the servo there's no indication it says that it's a digital servo 55521 uh, MG and that's it no waterproof servo and of course it's this module here which is not waterproof and I don't like how it's installed because here it has metal terminals and it's mounted over a aluminum metal plate not very smart it is secured with a zip tie but this takes it out of waterproofing and uh, electrical safety because it's exposed so I'm going to take this out and use a larger heat shrink over it or maybe just a bit of duct tape to cover these pins because I don't like them how they are exposed uh, there and can uh, touch the metal in case of a crash and burn some of the electronics right so I have also installed batteries in the transmitter and I'm going to power it on and I'm going to power on the ESC and so far so good steering works the ESC cooler is working and what is this switch here if you use it it's a slider uh, uh, one position slide so one position down will turn the uh, rear LEDs on switch it back to its position and then switch it back on it will turn on the headlamps so you can uh, start only the daylights or after that you can turn on the headlights and if I Click it again. It will make the LEDs to flash and hold flash rapidly or flash slowly and so on, making it visible like a warning light. So that's it. It will cycle uh, through those. If I cycle it again, it will be off one time again it will turn the red LEDs once again it will turn also the front LEDs and then it goes to both steady and then both flash so that's it with uh, LEDs and that switch and this is the module that does this this tiny module here it's connected to the third channel on the receiver and when it receives uh, one impulse it will do its first job and so on and it will repeat it cyclically which is okay it's good thinking so those are, that is the steering definitely faster than and noisy and let's see if I have some throttle Oh yes, this thing has incredible amount of throttle and I'm not even at maximum, um, I'm somewhere around half of the available throttle on the transmitters, so uh, 
this thing should really really get some speed and uh, these uh, were the key features uh, that I have wanted to mention for the first part of uh, this uh, introductionary review of course I'm going to charge the battery and take it outside for uh, uh, some uh, real testing and of course it will be on film very soon so be sure to follow my next uploads where I'm going to uh, put this beast in action. Until then, bye bye.